Hey guys, and welcome to another video, and welcome to a nice little negative video, where I tell you about all the books that I found super, super disappointing. I watched a video by someone recently, and for the life of me I can't remember who it was, but they basically talked about how uh, we on booktube, we like to watch negative book reviews, and we like to watch negative videos. I think my most liked video is book series that I will not finish, and that was just me basically talking about books I hated for 10 minutes. So I thought I would continue on somewhat in that vein and tell you about all the books that I've been disappointed by. And make note that I say disappointed, it's not that I hate any of these books. In fact, one of these books I did rate three and a half stars, so I definitely did like it, but there are reasons why it personally disappointed me at the time when I read it, if that makes sense. I will basically explain my reason behind each book as I go along, but yeah, let's just have a little bitch about some books. So the first book I'm going to talk about is going to be The Ring, or Ring, by Koji Suzuki. Now I read the translated from Japanese version, obviously, because I don't speak Japanese, but this is the books based on the Ring movies, you know, of She Who Comes Out of the TV fame. Again, this is one of those books that I didn't find terrible, but my disappointment can be summed up in one thing, and that is uh, Samara, or Sadako, you know, the little girl who gets pushed down the well. She is not in this book at all. Um, and she is sort of the main selling point of the movies. I know the books came first, but when I started reading this book I expected to get the story of a little girl who fell down the well and, you know, kills people through their TV. But that's not really how the author really tackles it in this novel. In this novel anyone who is about to die sort of gets a weird feeling and then they die. It's definitely more of like a virus type thing instead of a horror and it the whole book took a more of a mystery turn, and overall it was just a bit of a letdown due to my expectations plot-wise. I'm not sure I would really recommend this book to anyone who enjoyed the movies, just because it really does take what was really enjoyable for me from the movies and basically remove it for more of a pedestrian detective mystery. The second book is one that I actually really didn't enjoy, and I know a lot of people love it, and that is The Road by Cormac McCarthy. The writing is great, you know, Cormac McCarthy, fair play, the writing was really, really good. But nothing happens. Like, they're walking down a road, and they, they keep walking. That is what happens in this book. It was a few years ago that I've read it, and I, to be honest, I've forgotten most of it because, because it just didn't leave enough of an impression plot-wise. I've always been meaning to read something else by Cormac McCarthy, just to sort of see what the fuss is with him, because he disappointed me on the first book that I read, but I've never actually picked up anything else by him, and I think that is because I was disappointed in The Road, and it's lack of of overall plot. And maybe that's on me, maybe I'm a person who needs more plot in their novels to make it memorable, but I did watch the movie with uh, Viggo Mortensen, or Mortensen, and again, <laughs> didn't really enjoy it because it just failed to leave an impression for me. The third book I'm going to mention is going to be The Shining Girls by Lauren Bukes. Now, there was a lot of hype around this novel when it first came out because the premise is actually really, really interesting and it basically deals with a serial killer who can time travel, which sounds a bit sci-fi but it's treated in a more literary way and he basically time travels because he's looking for these shining girls and these shining girls are basically people who are just sort of better than everyone else. They have a glow, they're special. This book was just so disappointing. First of all, our main character is one of these shining girls, and I really didn't know what was that special about her. She really doesn't seem that special to be hunted by this time-traveling serial killer. She's a flawed character, and it feels like if she should be one of these shining girls, she shouldn't be that flawed. There should be something really there. And it's also never explained how the serial killer is traveling through time, and Overall, it was one of those books where it was very... it was hyped up to be something that it wasn't, I believe. So when I finished reading it, I think I gave it two stars in the end. You know, I flipped through it, it was a quick read, but again, it just did not leave that lasting impression that I expected it to. So the fourth book I'm going to talk about is The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. Now this is a book that spawned one of my favourite movies, 
The Virgin Suicides by Sofia Coppola. It's one of those good pretentious movies where you can say it's one of your favorites and people will be like, oh yes, yes, that is really good too. But everything that works about the movie version of The Virgin Suicides does not work in the book, or at least for me. I find the movie to be quite it was all about directing and music, everything was really pretty and everything worked through the style of the directing and the way everything was shot because ultimately the girls themselves are not that interesting, you don't really get to know them that much. But the way the movie presented it to us was just, it just worked so much better. And in the book version, it is a case of, again, this is a prominent theme in this video, where it just didn't seem like a lot was happening to keep me interested. And again, because I'd seen the movie, I, I know how it ends, I mean the t the ending is in the title, but I just wasn't hooked as much as I expected it to. A lot of my disappointment in these books actually comes from my expectations before reading them, and this is just one that I expected to love, but just really, really couldn't get behind. In fact, in fact I didn't actually finish it, I actually left it 50 pages from the end where that should tell you something because 50 pages is not a lot, but I just couldn't, just couldn't bring myself to finish. And then the last book I'm going to talk about is the book that I mentioned at the start where I actually gave it three and a half stars and I do think it's a good book, but there is a reason, as always, for my disappointment with this book. And this book is 1984 by George Orwell. And I know a lot of you are gonna be like, uh -huh. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? But let me explain. I studied this book for A-level. We did sort of a dystopian module. And we studied this in tandem with Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, which again is that dystopian. And we studied these two books at the same time. And it wasn't just me, but the whole class, because we'd spent one lesson on one, another lesson on the one, whenever we came in and we found out we were doing one on 1984, everyone sort of was just like, and I don't think it was necessarily because 1984 was so bad, it was actually because The Handmaid's Tale was so good in comparison. At least when it came to our class, everybody really, everyone really thought that The Handmaid's Tale was the one that was better. So even though I was reading 1984 and somewhat enjoying it, it also became somewhat of a chore because I would rather be reading The Handmaid's Tale. And it's just sort of unfortunate, I guess, that we studied them at the same time because The Handmaid's Tale went on to be one of my favourite books and then 1984 sort of just gets forgotten in my brain. When I think of 1984, I think, oh yeah, 1984 is good, but you know what you should read? Handmaid's Tale. We also watched the movie version in class and that was definitely, definitely a chore, but it was better than The Handmaid's Tale movie version, so there's something. But yes, that is sort of my strange reason for not enjoying 1984. And that actually concludes the five books that I have been disappointed by. In the comments below, let me know which book has most disappointed you and give me the reason for it. I'm interested to see the reasons because generally, sometimes it's more about expectations than the actual quality of the book itself. So I'm interested to see if that is a theme with you guys as well as me. But yes, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed my disappointment, please give it a thumbs up and I shall see you soon with another video. Goodbye!